it's about 30% of the Japanese one, right? Yet, their productivity is 0.6. So you have to adjust nominal person hour rate times productivity. And the moreover, in, on large scale project, you need Japanese sent to the local Asian center to supervise the work done by those Asian centers, right? So put everything in, there is no much difference between Japan made or Philippine made. So that's sort of a consideration. So in that case, adjustment by factors, production, uh, productivity factors, efficiency factors, that's a common scenario in the global business nowadays. Everybody speaks about outsourcing our work to uh, you know, the developing countries. IT industry done is doing, engineering construction industry has nearly 40 years of offshore development, or we call it offshore production. So we have to be careful. But there are interesting stories. Japanese IT companies don't tend to outsource production work to uh, Chinese uh, associates, uh, and uh, not many to India. I asked all, so many friends. They said, well, we can't write very precise specifications in English. That's why we can't come to India for work. But in general, construction company writing very detailed specification is a bread and butter business. And so my, uh, IT, my companies, my former employers, subsidiary, IT company always use Indian companies because Indians can perform very well according to given specifications. And so a lot of cultural you know, influence uh, in the global business. That should be discussed. So all in all, this is for professional, and uh, you just don't need to memorize all of this. Bottom-up estimating is a very detailed line-by-line -line estimating. Sometimes you call your vendors or call vendors to put in proposal. That's very detailed bottom-up estimating. Analogous estimating is to do a quick estimate using past similar project and use uh, uh, adjustment factor. Parametric estimating, I think I, in IT industry uses this uh, as one, uh, look at certain coefficient between the two uh, relations, like how many tons of concrete needed for square meters of foundation for a compressor, right? That's kind of use how many tons of, how many area square areas of compressor station, and then uh, the, there is historical data, and uh, look at just area numbers and times given historical, uh, you know, estimate rate. All in all, estimate accuracy needed varies considerably industry industry. In IT, when I founded Japanese PM Association for the first time, I got a talk with one IBM Japan executive, one from Fujitsu, one from uh, Hitachi. And they asked me, Tanaka-san, what's the cost estimate average accuracy in your industry? I said, well, plus minus 5%. Can't believe it. And I asked, what's your average number? Well, 30%, 50% is a very good number, right? And I asked them, how can you make profit out of that kind of very rough estimating? They said, well, from time to time, one out of 10, there are tremendous, there are projects that can make tremendous profit. So that's, that's, say 15 years ago or so, I don't tell you that this is still valid, but anyway, 
estimating human resources is ongoing challenge. Nobody has a very good method. Even in the engineering construction industry, estimating person hours is terrible, always fluctuate. So my president, my, my, my boss, my mentor once asked me, I said, I don't know. It's, there are so many engineers, so many the designers, the productivity is different. So my conclusion is that you can't tell for sure, but they estimate and tell me what is my budget. Probably that's budget. Budget is like uh, weather forecasting about human beings. Right? So tell me your experience. So this is an image of cost estimate line items. Project plans, PMG is project management function, PLD is project, uh, what, SLD? That's, I think, uh, type of resources, department cost. Unit is hour. Unit price is uh, given there, 8,000 yen. Quantity, 80 hours. Uh, amount, yen, but this doesn't give you the, uh, uh, what you say, the productivity. They say this one, confidence. Confidence is uh, how much percent are you sure about this figure? So always mature customers ask you, what's your confidence behind this figure? Is that 100%, 80%? So always, as I said, cost estimate should be accompanied by how to execute, right? Execution manner and by whom. And so it's a question you should ask. So this is a very simplified one, but on project you have hardware, equipment, materials, and we have different estimated method for that. But still, in the traditional engineering construction business, for items that exceeds, for instance, one million US dollars, you call bits from vendors, manufacturers, throughout the world. At Japanese engineering construction companies, ratios of procurement from sources outside of Japan amounts to some uh, 75 to 80%. We buy from global market, even from, uh, say, some part of African countries. And our vendors say, engineering construction companies have been buying our products constantly, but some Japanese suddenly come to us and ask us to quote this and that. But we look at customers, we have trustworthy, if we have trustworthy relationship for over the long term period, and then uh, we try to put in a very good uh, price for you. So that's long term alliance relationship with uh, say your suppliers Vendors, contractor, subcontractor, that's very important. So global business can't be built overnight. So it's time for us to be serious about how to build global business. So this is progress uh, measurement analysis about cost. You see, we have original budget, revised budget, current budget, and the budget this month, and the progress this month, to date, this is a Luikere, and a variance to date, right? So we use this kind of, we don't do this manually. Usually we use a computer software, cost management software. So we look at variance, and good control is to catch precursor of variance. So cost reporting and cost management are two different things. 
cost reporting is to just report what, how much amount was spent this month against the budget. That's not cost control, cost management, cost reporting. Cost management is that if you have five months to, of cost incurred, say months one, two, three, four, five, looking at months two, there is a trend of a variance, say, per se, and then you trace the reason for that uh, variance and make good, now make good or remove the codes for that variance. That's real management. That's control. So trending, right? And take proactive actions. That's control. This earned value management is uh, developed, was developed by American Pentagon, DOD, because so many projects were uh, of the development type, you can't predict how much money will cost at the completion of the project. And it's not good, Pentagon believe that it's not good for taxpayers. And then they come out with the management method that integrate the scope, time, and cost under the banner of the term, management term, management method, earned value management. So it's still used by defense industry and IT industry. But DOD, American Department of Energy, and general construction company owners don't use this earned value management system because we are mature industry and uh, this earned value management system consumes really uh, many person hours. So very troublesome. So for very simple, straightforward work, we say we don't use this. But idea, we use physical progress. As I said, we spent 75 hours out of 100 hours budget, progress 75%. That's kindergarten, I don't say, grade school's calculation. We business person don't go that way. Look at physical progress and progress. And progress is physical progress. Actually done in terms of deliverables, outputs, right? Just Yes, resources, what are resources, types of resources used in the project? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Very good, very good. Until 10 years ago, your answer is, uh, say 100%. Now, we lack one important resource, that is knowledge, okay? Knowledge is source of innovation, the source of a new business. Look at iPad, right? It's knowledge, creativity, not technical, uh, you know, the, the precision. And so please count knowledge as part of project resources. And especially when we enter the program management discussion, always knowledge cuts across, should cut across your mind. Okay? Question? Yes, of course. When you say at the simplest, knowledge can also be considered people, skill. Mm -hmm. Skills and experience yeah. of your people, um, but when you say knowledge, I know internally when we are mm -hmm. planning something new, we mm -hmm. you do a kind of SWOT mm -hmm. 
to find our own strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So is is that what you would consider well, part of knowledge? Knowledge. Something that we, we know is one of yes. our, our skills, right. something we're good at? Or? Yes. That's elementary knowledge. But the knowledge as we refer to here is structured knowledge. For instance, knowledge of project management per se, right? Or knowledge about fundamental subject at MBA courses. So all people we have some some knowledge skills. It's certainly knowledge, but knowledge that's referred to counter chair is a structured knowledge. A sort of you know a this academic discipline or the professional know how organized in some way. Do do you know the uh, you said uh, you led a knowledge creating company by Professor Noha Ohara, uh, the uh, Nonaka, the Nonaka Sensei, and Professor Takeuchi of Harvard University. They use a concept of sesi, or sometimes they call it seki, socialization, externalization. Uh, conceptualization and internalization. How to structure knowledge in the form? From, uh, you know, uh, invisible way to tacit, you know, format. So that's knowledge. So knowledge, in this case, is a knowledge ready for use to create something new. So that should be structured. Structured scientifically, uh, externalization, because in Japanese corporation knowledge is stayed with somebody, right? Some special persons, right? Professor Anegawa has his very deep knowledge, but some of them may stay with him. It's not shared by other professors because professors are like owners of companies. All individuals. I'm professor, traveling professor, or I'm called a rental professor. I go anywhere. Right? So another message is that most project costs and resources costs, especially human beings, professionals, uh, designers, programmers, and materials. So managing resources you know, uh, it's, it's a key of be a project, success or otherwise. So remember this. Now this is a flow of uh, full scale procurement work of resources that engineering companies, infrastructure companies, construction company uses. But this, I think this is to uh, uh, professional for you who, uh, who are not in the procurement department of companies. Procurement is called, referred to as supply chain management company at companies like Sony. And there is an uh, society of supply chain management. Almost same. So you need uh, the then vendors list, solicitation of bids, source selection, negotiation, issue of purchase order, expediting inspection. Expediting here means in Japanese kote kanri. Kote kanri. This. Ano, okina, kingaku wa haru bupin, kikai to kane, umu no hatu shita bai, hari tsuite. Hatchista 
So global business should be careful about traffic as well. Because for instance, you have to navigate through the very narrow straight, Murray Strait. That's dangerous. And also, you have to go through offshore Somalia. There are so many pirates. And so that's a lot of uh, big uh, you know, risk there. Now, we are in the project formation, organization, and communication. I tell you, there are three types of project organization. But we have to consider who decides which type of project organization we use. Apparently, that corporate policy, type and size of the project, and the confidentiality involved. So if there is very business secret, then you need a very isolated project team. That's, it's called a dedicated task force. But if you do average project, and then uh, you better use a big room, right? That's kind of things. The principle of project organization embraces this one. All the project organization should have four, I mean, three principles. The first is that organization has embedded mechanism of sharing the project mission and objectives. So ask each of you, if you are from the Grand Design by Japan program, what is the mission of the Grand Design program, right? To test whether the grand design of the Grand Design by Japan program is shared by project team members. So that's important. And so many successful CEOs have explained to us that issuing corporate senior CEO message only once is not good enough. You should repeat five times, six times to make sure that every, every members of your co company, of your project, understands the vision, the mission of our project or our endeavor, right? The second thing is that there should be incentive for collaboration, right? One of the benefits, merits of the Japanese project system traditionally is that project managers pay includes training, educating young team members, subordinates. But according to many, you don't do that many more any longer nowadays because of very tight control by the company. Don't have time to train young engineers, young you know, subordinates. But in my time, we did a lot of training of young uh, boys and girls. So when I was uh, appointed as section head for the first time, I got together everybody. Those days, we did the meeting in English because we have American employee. The first thing I said is that there will be times when company, JDG Corporation, cannot guarantee you lifetime employment. So I train you to be professional. So follow me, otherwise you can leave. And actually, some very good talents left me. But those remained, they are director of global marketing and associate director of uh, marketing, uh, say, Middle East uh, and uh, North Africa, personnel department manager, IT department manager. It's me that didn't get promotion, but all of them made a good job, right? So I trained them very much when I was uh, much younger. Um, but nowadays, according to my third daughter, who is employee of the same company, 
we do the 26. Usually, the managers don't do training of employees. So the time has uh, changed. And so incentive for collaboration. So you have to demonstrate that if you work hard, you have returns out of that, right? Not only promotion, but uh, uh, anyway, you have beautiful refinery in Singapore that you could tell your son, daughter, that this refinery was built by me, your dad, right? That's good. Uh, and ease of communications. So make uh, our project team as simple as possible. Simple one. Uh, I don't know whether business school teach this word. KISS, K-I-S-S. What's this? Does everybody know this part? Keep it simple and straight. That's kids, kiss, okay? That's American value. American always say, don't like redundancy. So always, well, I, 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 I saw many of my client companies, colleagues, uh, associates, and uh, industry colleagues, they received brochures commercial brochures of uh, my company. And they put away, just put away through the safe post. They say, well, the Japanese document are too much redundant. It's not time to value the proposal by, the, by, by volume, essence, executive summary. You have to tell me in 10,000 words in executive summary, and then I read the only that part, executive summary. And otherwise. So many failures of my colleague did is that client engineer asked me, why are you proposing this? Most of the time, early times, answers are, well, our company has been doing this very successfully. So that's why I'm proposing this. And that client sends me It's not convincing to me can't help me explain adoption of your proposal to my boss. I'm accountable for explaining why this is efficient, effective, right? That, that's Japanese perception gap of global business. We say, oh, we're doing this without problem, and so it's good. But you need to explain from scratch why this is proven in that way, in what way, and that's why we can recommend it to you with, as professional. Pro formation scheme, we have owner, prime contractor, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is a formation for a very big project, but we will join forces across the company, keywords, uh, Leverage, eh? Tiko, no Gendi. Combined strengths, right? One company has strengths in, uh, say, Vietnam. As I have no, no good experience, but have technology. And company C is close to Vietnam, and three have, have put in their own strengths. All together, they have very good balance of technology, country knowledge, and proximity to client, right? That's strength. Synergy, you understand, right? Working together, one plus one produces uh, not just two, 2.5. That's synergy. But in France, one plus one is uh, one. They don't get together. They are really individualist. Yes. So one plus one is sometimes 0 0.8. I am visiting professor. Until last year, I was a professor of Schema Business School. Under the government, 
all the two of the Grand Zeko business schools got together. But I realized that in France, one plus one is one. Really, but it's very hard. So what types of stakeholders are we in the project, right? Stakeholders are either owners of that project, companies who invest in that project, right? That's owner, uh, say, uh, one typical stakeholder. The second type is that those who participate in the project, like contractor companies, right? Service companies, or financiers, banks, right? The third stakeholder is those who utilize the project the products, like patients of a Medicare system. They are stakeholders of certain project. And those who are affected by the project, suppose uh, Governor Shintaro Ishihara, he proposed to build a casino in Tokyo. But depending on the site the casino is uh, located, neighborhood is affected, right? So those neighborhood people, residents, are negative stakeholders to that project. So you have to analyze what type of stakeholders and what are the pros, advantages, and disadvantages for those stakeholders. And then you manage pros and cons all together. This is a case of a very sophisticated one and a half billion dollar refinery project realized in Japan using project finance system. In America, they say project financing system. It's not corporate financing. The project itself is a security for, uh, you know, finances. So return, repay the, you know, loans by products of the refinery itself, like uh, uh, gas oil, the petrochemical fees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is too much difficult. Uh, probably for you to understand at this stage, but there are, you know, direct uh, stakeholders like owners, Indonesian State Oil Corporation, uh, and co contractors, suppliers, bankers. Yes. And this is one of the three types of project. This is functional organization based. Functional organizations are permanent organization. Many of the time, on a manufacturing and a manufacturing company, there is so-called a project manager, but he's not real project manager because he's just contact, right? Then why are you saying we are doing project management? Or customer tell us to to do project management. So somebody say marketing manager is appointed as nominal project manager, but everything else. It's the same. So you have to go through the co uh, corporate hierarchy to make a decision. The reverse side, extreme reverse side, is this dedicated task force. Everybody's put in in this project A. Even if you are the engineer, you put in the uh, project. And you have to f do abide by all the instructions by project manager. So originally, these green persons belong to the functional department, but they are cut off. Morally, still they are members of there, and uh, technically, they are supported, but they are put in the project. This is very fast in decision making, dedicated, but uh, what are the disadvantage of this system? Disadvantage. 
compare it with the functional system, the next max matrix system. If you make form this dedicated task force, that's good for that particular project. But it's not quite efficient from the overall resource utilization because these persons are reserved for this particular project, cannot be used. Suppose you are, uh, uh, say, electrical engineer. Usually, electrical en engineer, except on a very large project, work for several projects, right? But you can't do that because of confidentiality of technology involved in this project. Clients or a company, say, for instance, Sony develops some, uh, you know, strategic new products. They, you know, cut off that project from the corporate, uh, rest of the corporation to maintain the confidentiality. So in between, about, say, 90% or more of the project use this matrix organization. I mean, the combination of functional organization and project task force. So project management team contains only project manager and uh, some key managers and engineers. And the rest is done by permanent uh, department, like uh, you know, inspection departments, quality management department, etc. So this meets both uh, advantage of functional department. You can maintain technology, fast moving technology, right? And at the same time, you still have uh, fast, sp speedy decision making because you have dedicated project manager and dedicated project management team. So depending on your needs, you decide. But most of the time, this matrix organization is by far the most popular. <laughs> this is typical project organization, an industrial project. In IT, the project is not project team is not uh, like uh, complex like this. This is just for your reference. So this position and hire are contained in the project uh, team or project management team. These are the permanent organization which take part in the project execution. And it's called, the total is called a project organization. So authority and responsibility of project manager. The first thing the project manager should direct the total project team and integrate the total efforts in the most efficient and effective manner. That's the first point. The second point is the project manager is a central focus point, focal point of communication. On a major side project, people so-called task doers can't communicate. You have to go through the project management function. So that's it. Uh, and assume the final responsibility towards the project owner, of course, and the guide the team to the accomplishment project objectives. Now, my question, what makes you a good project manager? So don't look at the next slide, please. Right? This is exercise. What the factors that make you a good project manager from your experience, from the experience of your company or of your colleagues? List your ideas. Anybody? Yokoyama-san? Yes. Uh, that's uh, 
リーダーシップ Okay, who's next? Ishikawa san, what do you think? Having a strong will to achieve. Okay. I need two more. Uh, say, Ito Mayumi san. He to the risk manager. Huh? Uh, be conscious for the risk manager. Good. Who else would like to contribute? Any comments is okay. This is fun. So we're not building a uh, ready presence in GM plants, so it's a joke. Uh, <coughs> Ishi-san, uh, how about calling you? Mm -hmm. Seki, Seki. Seki-san, <laughs> what do you think? Um, a good project manager. Yeah. Um, he or she has to be very motivated. I mean, can keep the yeah. group together at yeah. the hard times. Yes. Very good. One more. So, Kodama Sensei, from your experience, from your project, think about you, your experience, only a successful group. <coughs> Inspiration. That's very good. Leadership, care of protecting members, determination to any way accomplish. Risk management, consciousness. 24 typo. To save time, I don't grab. Motivation to achieve. Can do, can do, can do. That's the spirit, right? And then uh, inspiration. That's very important. That we average project manager don't have. So, I'm very much, in, 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 you know, encouraged by your comments. Thank you very much. Yes. I, I was debating whether to offer the 
suggestion of uh, knowledge of the knowledge of the industry that uh, that the project the sphere of industry that the project exists okay. in. But I'm wondering how important that is. If your team has enough industry, mm. maybe the project manager doesn't, come back. doesn't well, need the next slide. Yes. Yes, make it short. Uh, inspiration and knowledge. Okay, very good job. And this is recorded, right? Okay, let's go on. My experience over the past 30 years tells me, told, tells you that these are the uh, contributing uh, benefits to make a project manager. First of all, result orientation, right? You should have clear-cut outputs, results. So in this project, please, Grand Design by Japan, you should have your very good output, results, right? Business knowledge, you're right. After surfing on the very artificial, I know, superficial, knowledge of project management, we started again to voice that industry business knowledge related to your project is very vital. So you're, you're right. Integration ability, of course. People who love yourself, don't be a project manager, right? Project manager should be a people integrator caretaker, right? And sense of balance. In Europe, in all graduate school, what is voiced by uh, professors is critical thinking ability. Critical thinking ability. So that's the first item to score master PhD students, critical thinking, okay? And the systemic thinking, as I said, it's not just a logical breakdown. What is the overall picture of this project? And what is the leverage point? Resilience, now the term resilience is voiced in Japan. But in the business world, the global business world, Japanese are so famous about having resilient capability or resilience. This is fukutsu no seishin. Ano, are desu. Hangane no ne, fukugen ryoku kara kiteru koto ba desu. Yes. And team player, you should be a team player especially in Japanese system, this is true. And finally, whole sense. This is human handling. This is own sense of direction. This whole sense was quite often mentioned in American PM society until 20 years ago. But if you ask IT, American IT project manager, nobody can understand this one. Whole sense. My, my impression is it's the same as common sense. Joshiki, yeah. yeah. But I never thought about also a horse has an excellent sense of direction also. <laughs> so you know, maybe not just common sense, yeah. but in, intuition. Yeah. So I propose, this is my, my version. Dandori, Samurai Dandori Project Manager. Okay? Do, act, navigate, determine, own, recover. So 
the job of project manager is a series of recovery. Improve, done, Dori. So remember this. This is easy. And uh, tell the truth of being a project manager. OK? Risk management. Uh, risk is not just negative risk. Risk management is a modern project management theory or management theory. It's management of uncertainty that can turn into either opportunity or adverse impact of a negative risk. So there are two sides of a coin, right? So, Nihongo de you risk management to the negative side of a kai this kedo. So, risk management theory is uh, heavily used by investment decision making, whether you go or no. My colleague from the same company, Dr. Sato, he's a specialist on uh, risk, and he uh, wrote his PhD paper at Tokyo University uh, based on this risk uh, theory about investment decision. Uh, so true risk management is to pursue maximum opportunity and reduce impacts and adverse effect, both caused by uncertainty. Uh, and of course, highlight should be given to uh, managing negative risks because it's a big issue. And also, Capturing opportunity is not quite easy to do. It's easy to say, but only experience can help you uh, pursue this opportunity capture case. So this is risk management perspective. Generally, you should know that uh, there is philosophy that uh, philosophy tells uncertainty, certainty exists. It's plus or minus. And uncertainty can be managed. If not, it can't be eliminated, right? The third thing is a proactive approach pays a dividend. So systems approach to risk. Situation has changed. So, so many changes are taking place now. Global scenario level, country scenario level, Right? Tohoku, Daishinsai, the industry level. Say five years ago, how many IT professionals uh, were there that the arrival of uh, cloud technology changes the market situation this much? Right? And the uh, company scenario. Look at Panasonic. They said, we will step up, say, eco-smart products, right? Produce uh, solar panels, this and that. And then they say, well, we shut down the solar panel plant, this and that. And so scenario is so much changing. So that risk management, part of the risk management story. Uh, there is a, a question about how much Tolerance can you have as a corporation? So some risk uh, companies are risk uh, taker, some of uh, just a guardian. I heard that uh, Anagawa Sensei, when you were a student at uh, Yale University, you researched the oil, major oil companies, right? And probably you touched whether they, they are risk takers or the players. So risk management is a very serious subject for uh, those energy companies who always navigate through risks. Uh, risk tolerance, Kyoyo Hai, positive pursuit opportunity versus uh, custodian. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, risk, risk management consists of risk, uh, identifying risk events, risk quantification, impact evaluation, countermeasures, 
uh, mitigate hedge workaround accept. And uh, true evaluation, uh, evaluation, true return of risk management investment. So typical positive risks, examples, transaction the foreign currencies, right? It's risky. However, if you have, uh, what to say, uh, crystal ball, then you may invest in uh, American dollars, and then it's evaluated some some day, uh, or vice versa. Buying in the global project resources, buy things from, for instance, uh, Myanmar. Maybe makes sense if you manage supervision quite well, Myanmar manufacturer, right? Startup ventures, low cost engineering center, this, or fabricator, this is the trade off between low cost and efficiency, productivity. Natural resources development, right? And these are positive, uh, opposite side, negative risks. The first several thing is about agree, uh, say objectives. So golden rule is that if you don't have very clear cut objectives, you lose. So you spend time and effort in agreeing on clear cut objectives. Mission translated into objectives. That's the question. Share the objectives. And as a lack of alignment, between the owner and the contractor, lack of capability of a project managers, heated materials market, country risk, community risk. Community risk is uh, special for uh, energy project, probably. Nigeria, etc. Always community upheaves. It's very dangerous. Uh, that shell. Exxon, mobile there. So, talking about uh, human factors to invite risks, these are the, you know, the causes of uh, risk, right? The first one is I don't know, lack of knowledge. The second one, don't have required ability or keep capacity. Don't have time to do a good quality planning. Don't have sensitivity, right? too naive. That's source of risk. Can't afford to say no. I believe that this project, we should not uh, get this contract. But my boss, my company's you know, boss, CEO says, we should you know, buy this project at the low bid price to keep running the company, right? Don't afford to say no. These are the common backgrounds of environment risks. This chart says risks, volume of risk decrease with the progress of the project, but impact of one risk event increases in the latter stage of the project, once occurred, right? This, this is typical risk profile. And another picture shows if you are an owner, risk profiles are different depending on the stage of the project. For instance, in the project development stage, you have so-called project development risk invest money for the feasibility study, et cetera, et cetera. And then the uh, project uh, is uh, judged as not feasible, and then you drop the project. So that's the bottom list. And after contract is awarded to the contractor, your risk as owner is project completion risk, whether the, the, the contractor who got awarded the project Bit too much low cost, 
and the contract trying to save money about what they should have spent, right? Cheap execution. And then, uh, uh, then the cont that contractor, uh, you know, got in trouble, financial trouble. American major size contract like uh, Bechtel, they ran away from Algerian market when some of their project were got troubled about 40 years ago. But Japanese, my company, they cost, uh, you know, about twice the contract price in Algeria. On the next job, the company gained the same amount or more. So that's very risky side of the business. And then nearing the completion of the project, you start training operation staff, maintenance staff. So that's pre-investment. So owner's risk increases. But when the production comes to uh, you know, the noble operation, your risk uh, you know, remains flat. Right? So it's, this is utility versus risk. Utility in the management is a measure of relative satisfaction. In other words, utility is a term referring to the total satisfaction received by a consumer from uh, consuming a good service, good or service. So this is how much money you lose or you, how much money dollars you gain, right? So this, is, this curve is called theoretical utility curve. And actually, which way you go is uh, like a dice, right? You look at, you expect uh, uh, number four, four number, and then the, the actual result, one, something like that. So utility is a function of risk taken in some way. That's what uh, this chart is saying. This is a decision tree. So there are possibility of a certain decision, 70% uh, possibility of dry hole, no oil or natural gas pound. 20% possibility of 2 billion cubic feet of uh, natural gas. 10% possibility of 5 BCF. Which way would go? That's decision making, uh, decision tree. This is more a uh, logical one. Evaluate the expected monetary value, EBM, by decision node, right? Uh, probability node on the upper side has two choices. And possibility, probability is 20%, 80%. And when done, expected monetary value is uh, uh, 1 million yen. The second one is uh, minus 200,000 yen, right? And then you decide. This is the uh, plus and minus. And decide which way you go. So that's EBM. And the resource company do this very complicated uh, decision making like this. But this simplified button is used by all project companies. So this is quantified risk variation. The easiest way for quantifying this is, you should be tired, but be patient for the quarter, the half an hour from now. Say, One of the most popular way to quantify this is PERT, product program evaluation and review technique. So you assign three, look at three numbers, how many durations, right? 
uh, optimistic duration is, uh, say, six months, and it's assigned the times one. And most probable, uh, four, three and four months. Uh, no, optimistic is, say, three months. This is, for instance, five months. And the pessimistic is six months. Number of months times one, times four, times six. And total value divided by six gives you a reasonable average quantified number. That's, it's called a PERT value. That's part of operations research. But this is good, this method is good if you talk about work done by so many people. But if this depends on, the duration depends on particular person, this doesn't make sense. For instance, suppose that we repeat this seminar in Japanese in Sendai, how soon can we realize that? Right? It's not just a mathematical calculation. The question of whether Professor Anegawa is available, I'm available, or budget permit, right? So this uh, quantification is a false sense of security, right? So, but anyway, on a complicated project, we use methods like this. And another quite common way is this grid analysis, that matrix analysis, right? You put your, so on the vertical axis, you have type of project. This is Nissan revival case, project A, B, C, D. And this is the evaluation criteria, profitability, growth, potential market share, low risk profile, load on environment. And you got uh, A down to D, right? I think all of you do, do this in uh, business school exercises. It's called a grid analysis. It's part of a risk analysis as well. Well, matrix value analysis is another term for this. Uh, instead, you can uh, quantify this latent by using the scale of 1 to 10. But once again, management should have criteria with higher weight values than others, right? Profitability first or growth potential first. And that makes the story a little bit different. And so use judgment in using this kind of uh, evaluation method. Yes? That should be divided by six. Sometimes the, uh, the elements cannot be uh, expressed by figures. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, for the grid analysis, so we put A or B or C, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very difficult to express mm -hmm. by figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, for part value, uh, what should be divided by six? For analysis? Uh, Hours or the budget or? Yes, budget mm -hmm. and durations of uh, project schedule, mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. uh, you have standard company data about how, much how many days it takes to complete this one, right? But again, one point, one single point estimate is dangerous. So we recommend that com your company standard says, uh, say, five days, five days times four. That's weight value. And uh, somebody say, well, looking at the current situation, you can do it much quicker. And then uh, you say four days, right, times one. And uh, but say, no, 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 no. It's, it takes seven days, then, then say. So six is just this one plus four plus uh, one. It gives you six. So it's a sort of, you know, very quick uh, rules of some, you know, guides to evaluate three different possibilities. So 
Again, this is used for uh, cost budgets as well as du uh, durations. That's ordinary use. Thank you very much. So, in the we are in the final corner. Okay, issue management. Uh, issues are troubles and causal, uh, say, casual problems that can happen surely, but no, don't know what kind and when. And so we need uh, attention to that to solve this, uh, uh, these issues. In IT industry, you have so-called issue logs, right? And then you have a list of issues that you have to solve, this kind of issues. The issues are generally not accounted for in risk plans, but can happen surely. Issue management by means of formal response is essential for quickest possible responses and at the minimal additional cost. And for solving issues, there are two ways. One is technical solution, and another is management solution, right? i show you one very simple uh, example. Now, on September 2nd, I went to my former association, that's, uh, that's here. This is my home. This is my nearest station. This is the train, the station B, and I, I, I went to uh, the association for a meeting. And after that, I dropped by at uh, uh, Izakaya because I used to go there for relaxation. And I have to tell the mama san that I uh, am no longer president. And I can't come here quite often. You should do that, right? I stayed there. And after happy hours, one and a half hours, I fell down on the platform of Kasumigaseki Station on my face on the platform. And I uh, got damage on my uh, teeth. And uh, uh, I protected myself this way. So this side. So I have to go to the plastic surgery next day. Now, this is issue, not risk, right? And there are scenarios. The first one is that uh, whether I should have left home at the three o'clock, uh, one o'clock or two o'clock, right? And then meeting. Should I finish here at four o'clock or five o'clock so that I don't have, uh, you know, I don't drop by at uh, Izakaya, come earlier. But uh, after all, I stay there at, uh, until 5 o'clock, and then go to the Izakaya-san. And uh, the, well, so point three, the, the decision is go or no go. And there, the, the question was, I, I take two glasses of uh, Nihonshu, or Three glasses. I did three glasses. Uh, that made me very happy. And so, <laughs> what my question is? Uh, oh, and then one of the reasons is that you know the romance uh, metro romance car that's older queue coming into the metro line, and I saw a uh, uh, older queue rom romance car coming. And I hesitate whether I uh, buy a ticket or not. And then uh, my, I was careless about my feet and then fell down, okay? Now, question is, what is an immediate solution? The second question, what is the root cause to solve, right? So first question, what is immediate solution? I got injury. Go to doctors, right? That's technical solution. And the second question, what is the root cause to solve? Don't go to Izakaya, right? Or visit the association in the morning. So 
this is very <laughs> simplified case, but we see so many similar situations like this in business, like uh, accidents, right? And then it says that in, in at the beginning of the project, the situation is quite stable. So ball at the bottom. But once the project gets started, there is inertia, momentum, and uh, ball at the top likes a rolling snowball. Small issue may develop to catastrophe. Do you agree with this? Do you have experience similar like this? Right? And so have to be very careful. So shoot the issue as soon as possible. Don't leave it. And there are some uh, uh, comments, and this is issue log. One final message is that one is if you made, if you invited some accident, look at the causes, mechanical troubles or processes, and uh, improve that kind of process or a technical uh, method. That's the quicker solution. But at the same time, use uh, management creativity to solve the issue. For instance, uh, brain work. For instance, reallocation of budget. So project manager decides to allocate more persons to solve the, the, the problem in question, okay? Or earlier solution to prevent it turning into catastrophe. And reallocate the sequence of the work, right? That's possible. And project manager directly talk to client for negotiation. And so your engineers are afraid, scared, Probably our customer doesn't accept this uh, mistake in the work. But project manager explained, this doesn't make any impact on the final function of your project. OK. So keep having the very good daily communication with the project manager can help you solve the problem. So that's management solution. OK. That's end of this long afternoon discussion. This is for day three. So at this time, before we play, we should decide on which subject should we choose for a uh, workshop tomorrow. We can start it tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So Anega Sensei, please uh, join me. Yes. Uh, could you load it up? So that's what it means. Uh, Sensei, just to see myself. Ah, I this. Hi, I know. なくても十分これだけあれば終わりますのでで,ですねえー、っとこれどれだろうな私のやつはファイルですかえー、ファイルこれ,これですかね、当日ファイルですね。で、これこっちを見せます。So, I explain very briefly what we are going to do in our、uh, project management workshop. We will have three groups. And three groups have separate project, project themes, project A, B, C, title, this and that, okay? 
and then you uh, give a statement of project team member and project mission statement, project proposal, project uh, explanation in brief, key success factor, justification, that's rationale, benefit, project execution approaches, just tick. An essence of project execution plan, project cost summary, how much for uh, professional services? That means one hour, person hour cost, material, subcontract, and the project uh, stakeholder relation map, uh, scope definition, WBS, Cost estimate, if you do, you can do project schedule, risk analysis. You do this kind of uh, the uh, exercise in Japanese, okay, discussion in Japanese, okay. And I'm attaching the image of eco smart community, compact smart community at the end of the template slide. So that first we do discuss that uh, one of the Potential candidates to the workshop themes will be something related to uh, eco smart community. For instance, eco smart community in Tohoku district. So, in the my work word document, given the instruction, there are four uh, cases that you can use. The first is eco building of 50 eco-smart houses. The second topic is uh, smart, uh, no, uh, uh, grid, grid of uh, new energy, uh, renewable energy. Third thing is uh, Kizuna project of, uh, say, simulated Tohoku tourism company promoting uh, tourism business with French visitors. And fourth is a knowledge management system for prefecture government of uh, Tohoku. So that's sample. And uh, as I said in the preload, I mean, uh, preview, uh, file items, it's free to the group, which seem to take. You are not bound to choose one of the four, but you can create your own project as material of workshop. You now, yes, these are the candidates. I yes, mean, and there's some explanation. Okay, so five the first is the building. For smart. They're listed on file four. File four. Yes. Everybody has file four. That's what one file. Right. Yes. Okay, so there is a let's explain it to you by using the file. So this, there is only one word file. The first part is guides, what to do, okay? And second part is workshop templates. That's the slide I have shown. That's slide uh, file number five. That's for project management, file number five. PM. And for your convenience, I'm given four cases and explain some basic uh, fact of what is the assumption. The first is developing a model eco home community, build 50 eco homes like this. Okay? 
The second case is designing and constructing a digital grid for compact community. Digital grid is a grid, power grid, so then system, except traditional power grid. So it's a grid of uh, renewables like solar, uh, geothermal, wind turbine, things like that. And describe case and what the features, pictures, right? And uh, if you need a reference uh, in, uh, you know, the uh, internet. And the KC is developing tour de Tohoku Esprit. That's Tohoku Tua project, tourism, Tohoku tourism project for an international uh, virtual Kizuna project, joining forces. Suppose there is one medium-sized Tohoku tourism company, and as I said, French loves tailor-made uh, tours of Japan. They love Japanese culture. And so not, we don't talk about the package tour, but semi-tailor-made tour for them. That's, that's assumption. I don't argue whether they, it is feasible business or not. And fourth case is developing knowledge management system at the prefecture government office. So which Miyagi Ken prefecture or Iwate or Seiba. The point is that people are saying that there are so many things new that we have to do. We need some database uh, collection of lessons learned, kyokun, or new idea as a system. So that's the starting point of this uh, fictitious story. So these four. In addition, possible, uh, Workshop themes will be advanced Medicare, yes? fishery industry modernization in Tohoku, social political uh, scenario in Asia, uh, we have professor, and uh, else. And so, uh, what is your suggestion, Anagawa Sensei? Uh, so, two ways. One is based on the themes and the issues first, or the group building is first, which is better. So, just divide the group, or so. So, we have about 21. Do you have any suggestion? The three of us would like to use uh, yeah. Dr. Suresh's project. Okay, so that is a choice. The so three. anybody, he, he has. Okay. He has the base. This one. Well, well thought out. Mm -hmm. So we think it, it would be a good, good. learning good. learning example to use. Okay. And anybody else is welcome to join us. We are joining him. So okay. anybody else, right? So, so how many? One good point is that there are English speakers. You don't need to write, you know, <laughs> sentences. That's a good point, right? So maybe there we will set up the three or yes, groups, three groups. So yes, we pick this one first, okay? So and uh, so it's better to go by the topics uh, or themes. Any suggestions? Say something now. Oh, or Tohoku Fukuoka model. 
reconstruction Tohoku business models as well as finance. And the delegates who <coughs> wish to pursue that thing. So any suggestion or any preference? It's interesting.
Usually we do this uh, at Trade Business School in Ukraine. That theme is given on the spot for people, the student group. Uh, okay? Is there anyone who has a question? Or who has not yet decided? Raise your hand. Any questions? Question about the lecture today? No, 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 no. no the grouping. Yes, grouping or a theme that you are going to pursue with a strong uh, recommendation whatsoever. I mix a uh, class tomorrow. Uh, like at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Is that okay? And you get together and discuss for some time the start exercise. And I'm available anytime. And you can use uh, three rooms yes. on this floor. Uh, the or group one. Uh, there are three rooms available, so we can use each of them uh, based on the themes. So, so I would like to kindly ask you to read pretty file number uh, four and five. Number four, file number four is what file giving you uh, steps of a workshop, what to do. And uh, file number five is template, PowerPoint slide. You, you, you put in what you have uh, thought about. Well, you can modify the format. It's not the examination. It, you can pretty uh, develop your the thought using the basic principles. And ma many students, I mean the delegates, make it cos cosmetics like Filipino. They don't like uh, my, you know, very old-fashioned slides. So they put in animation or whatsoever. It's free. Yes. Uh, I couldn't download uh, file number five six uh, properly. I I uh, give you the, the disk and uh, you download this. Does your computer has a uh, slot for yes. DVD? And then uh file no subfolder arimasu kara. そこに全部ファイルが入ってます。Everybody else? Who needs a DVD? You have, you have PowerPoint uh, P, uh, PPTX? Oh, it's a little bit, yes. I have to look available in the so you don't have the hang right? Do you have it? Do you have the PPTX? ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティアップ。ピピティ
私の名刺を渡してない方に言っていただいたら、はい。はい。はい。どうもありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。これはそれはいりませんので、ちょっと私、読んで持ってきたので、あのここにファイル、これ開けちゃいましたかそうじゃない、もっと戻っていただいて、まだまだ、まだ、はい、切ってよろしいですか。はいネットフリックスファイルにいますね。はい、えっと。